Okay, in this uh, little instruction, I want to just kind of briefly go over the nonlinear deformers. It's another way of kind of getting to where you need to with your shapes, other than just polygon modeling, moving vertexes around, or using your surface tool, your um, curves tool to make surfaces. Say, for instance, this little odd shape right here. It's just a cylinder basically bent over at the top like a pipe. Now I could do this a number of ways. I could like take the curve tool and draw the shape and extrude around like we learned. Or I could take a cylinder drop in there and slowly start moving these vertexes, which would take forever. But um, in this case, you can get these shapes a little faster. Say for instance, like this squashed um, sphere over here, which is kind of supposed to represent like a, just a beanbag chair. You don't necessarily need to take and use the scale tool, which you could for something like this, but in this shape right here, it's just going to be a lot faster to use these in the modeling tab, these deformer tools, nonlinear deformers. And there's a number of them you can use. And I'll kind of demonstrate how I kind of got some of these shapes. Okay, so as with the same as the in cloth, like using the animation for adding an end cloth, um, making it deform, you need to have divisions. So say if I wanted to create a bendy pipe, I'm obviously going to need some height divisions to make it bend well. I'm going to extrude it out a little bit. Bring it to the middle right there. You need to have the object selected, go to deform, and we'll just do the bend on this. You can bring up the box here and it's going to show you all these different constraints here, which I'll show you how to get to these things, but these are the default ones that it's going to come with. So I'm going to apply it. So nothing seemed to happen, but it did, if you notice in the outliner, it added a bend handle and it's actually in the middle of it. If you were to go to wireframe view, you'd see that handle right there in the middle of it. These attributes for this bin handle are what's going to make it take its shape. To access those attributes, you just hit the bend over here. Then you have all these envelope, curvature, low bound, high bound. I didn't really mess with the envelope. That's basically how much percentage of it affects. I don't really ever, hardly ever go for that. But um, the curvature is where you're going to see where it's initially going to start bending. So without the geometry sector, you need to select the handle. You could select these in middle mouse key and kind of like um, go left or right and make these things kind of the shape you want to. Now, if you notice, my pivot point is right in the middle, so I bend twice. Well, that would have to do with the low bound and the high bound. Adjust it that way. You notice the curve kind of keeps going around. So if you didn't want your shape to completely bend around, have it like that. Now, um, once you got the shape kind of how you want to, per se, um, you're kind of stuck with it right here. It's like, if I were to move this thing up, it's just going to move up my deformer because the deformer is what's controlling this piece of geometry. Now you can select both of them and move them. Kind of adjust it from there but sometimes if you get this thing kind of how you like it move it back the best thing to do is to delete the history on it then you've kind of ridded the deformer from it but that's only in case whenever you're at the shape that you want to so if you just go in edit delete by type now i deleted that handle over there You have a plane. You want to create like a half pipe or a uh, add a deformer tool, add a bend to it. But you notice it's straight up. 
So therefore, if I go to bending, it doesn't really do anything because it's not affecting it. It needs the actual deformer needs to be bent. You can take these deformers and rotate them down there. You can get it exactly 90 degrees, like negative 90. Now let's go look at the curvature where it's at. Yeah, it's doing it right. If it comes out to it, to where um, it was bending the plane opposite ways, you can actually take it and then turn it again. But I don't really want it like that. I want it the other way. Now you can adjust your low bound and your high bound however you want it to. Sometimes that's a quick thing for rendering out stuff because you may want to render out some objects on this plane here and not have any light affecting it or any of the background affecting it. So you can kind of make your object kind of just bend just a quick, you know, um, a nice little crease, not a, not two planes or not two walls. In other words, just give it a nice smooth uh, render. If I were to render this. So if I had my object here, you really wouldn't notice the background at all. It would be whatever color you assigned it. Uh, let's look at another one. Look at the ball this time, or sphere. Let's look at our squash. I don't use much of the, you can use the twist in the wave, but mostly if I'm modeling it, just in my experience, I've used the bend, the flare, and the squash. Your squash is a little different if you look at it. Your factor. You may want to make it like a beanbag style. You could take the low bound. Get like a bean type thing. Get it looking. Can move this actually. Sounds like that, maybe. That's really kind of how you want to do it. It's all about moving this low bound, high bound, this factor, your expand. I use this a lot in the animation classes too, because um, you can actually animate these attributes right here. It's just a lot easier to animate. Um, a deformer sometimes than it is to um, do the scale, animate scale. I mean, that works too. Like, if I were to basically have not have added this, you know, especially with the sphere, you can, you know, go over your scale and kind of like kind of make it how you want to. But you need to be careful about um, You know how you set it, how you do it, but I do like it with um, the squash because it works for you know all items basically. Let me go down here, so that's what I'm looking for. 
Hmm. Okay. Enough playing. But yeah, I'll let you experiment with it. Um, let's look at the, another one. The flare. We can look at the sphere. Or the um, cylinder. I haven't used this one in a while. Oh yeah. Make some really cool shapes here. Making a lampshades different um, different sizes. Just remember if you want to take this shape anywhere else and you're done kind of what it looks like and you've not uh, grouped these two items together if you want to. I wouldn't combine them or anything, you just group them or just move them in, in sequence to each other, you just delete the history. You got your object. And then there is, let me get back to my normal shape twist one which is really cool if you twist the spear it's not going to do much unless you really twisted it but if I take and I um took these faces here subsequently this hell of it. So I'm going to add a twist to that and see what happens. Uh, not much. Probably would look better if I didn't extrude it out, actually. Start seeing them in there. See how my polygons are twisting. Everything's still quad, so I'm still good. But I'd be curious to see like how things um things will extrude out from here. And I'm just playing right now, so I don't know how much of a change. happens if I twist the box. Too much because I really want to like make it um Got to add some divisions in there. That is a cool shape, though. So yeah, so the sky's the limit with these deformer tools. Just remember, if you want to move them around or anything like that, you need to delete the history on them. But they're really good for like squashing 
items together. They're good for bending. Bending. I use them more so for bending items, really. Uh, planes and cylinders, getting them how I want to, and the squashing things. And uh, but like I said, you can experiment with all these things. It may get you there faster than um, simply moving vertexes around or actually even using the curve tools. So uh, have fun with those. And that is nonlinear deformers. Okay.